How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Karri Hänninen, and welcome to <laughs> this a bit different video where I'll be going over my approach and some tips for the Ole English 14 days challenge. I've been practicing the lick uh, for four days now. I'm gonna have the fifth day practice session after shooting this video. And I've been streaming the whole thing, so if you're interested in watching me actually practice, I'll have the links in the description. And quickly before we start, I have a few open spots for students, so check out my website for that. So where I pretty much start when I start to learn new things is actually trying to kind of wrap your head around uh, how the timing goes for uh, in the riff or the lick. So in this example where it's pretty much this uh, shape with kind of a what note groupings, uh, I will start off with uh, practicing kind of the four note feel. So it's like 16th note feel. So you put on a metronome at a, a slow tempo as you need so you can kind of perform this exercise. And you play four notes for every metronome click. And you play every kind of note that lands on the metronome click. Uh, you play them with a little accent on the right hand. And what that gives you is pretty much kind of the... Uh, it gives you the idea of what, what notes you need to play and kind of a, when you have the metronome at faster tempos that's also going to give you kind of a muscle memory sort of thing uh, when you play faster so you know like when you're supposed to hit those certain notes that land on top of the metronome. So th that's really good that you kind of understand the lick. So you can kind of... Uh, you can kind of listen to the melody and you know that... So you kind of know where those important notes are. And like I said, uh, I suggest you start with four note groups. And when you start to play faster, you can kind of start to imagine them as eight note groups. That's obviously for the faster speed, but what that does is uh, it gives you more time to kind of uh, you can kind of let your muscle memory do the thing, your hand just <laughs> play the parts and you can kind of focus on those uh, those important notes. So you don't have to think about every fourth note if you're playing like super fast. So it's going to be much easier if you think about every eight notes. So you should start off with a four note feel. So kind of uh, accenting every fourth note. But uh, when you start to play faster stuff, it can be pretty hard to kind of think about every individual note when the metronome just goes click, 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 click. It's kind of uh, too much to think, so... Uh, but then you should probably think of them uh, as like eighth note groups. You don't really need to do those accents when you play fast, but it's a really good exercise to kind of uh, get you to know where those important notes are, so you know that, okay, that's the note you need to hit on top of the metronome. And what I have actually been doing is, uh, I've been kind of thinking about the lick as kind of a two string groups. So it's kind of an odd thing and I'm actually planning to change it today. And I'm going to start to think of them as eight note groups and see if that gets the lick any tighter. So uh, I've been kind of thinking it. Uh, so the first kind of uh, pattern would be this. And then I would kind of focus on hitting this note on time. And then this note. And it seems to work pretty well for me, but uh, the problem is that kind of those string changing important notes, they are not at the same time as the metronome, so it can get kind of a kind of a tricky thing. But yeah, it seems to work pretty well for me at the moment, but I'll try to change it to eight note groups. And I think that will make it even tighter when I can kind of uh, hit the important, important notes at the same time as the metronome. One of the problem areas I had was when changing strings, kind of the outside picking motion between the uh, B and G string and the D and A string. But what I like to do there is to do the last upstroke on the B string. <laughs> That's kind of over exaggerating, but you kind of do a little bit wider motion on the pick. Uh, so you will be already on top of the G-string that you will hit next. 
and now you will be kind of your picking and it's already ready already ready on the G string and same thing here and also when I watch back some of the first uh, strings that I did uh, the first day of practicing and second day of practicing I noticed that my right hand like picking hand wrist did like a weird thing like it was pretty pretty good in the thinner strings but when it got the thicker strings I noticed that it started to twist like this so let me try to replicate that <laughs> I think you'll see it there better. So it started to twist like this a little bit, and that's that's something that I found that it kind of loses the accuracy on the thicker strings. So it's probably because for a long time I used to play like the thicker strings like this, kind of resting the palm there. But that's really not good when you try to be accurate, like when changing strings. On just the E string stuff, it works great. But when you start to do I, f I found it much much easier if I try to keep the wrist sort of level every way. So it, it keeps kind of this steady angle and position. It pretty much, uh, on the thicker strings, it's pretty much like a little bit on air. And that seems to work great for me, uh, but yeah, feel free to try that if you have the same kind of a angling thing on the right hand. How I like the start of my practice session when I practice this lick is I usually put the metronome at around 120 BPM and I just focus on hitting those kind of every four notes exactly at the same time as the metronome. So. And then I start to bump the metronome up uh, like 10 BPM at once. And when I get to something like 180 BPM, which is at the moment kind of that kind of comfortable tempo to play at, it's not still as clean as I would like it to be, but that's something I'm also working on. But when I get to like that comfortable speed where I can play pretty, pretty fine, I like to bump the metronome even higher speeds. Uh, when I'm warmed up, so that's important. You don't go straight into like 200 BPM. But when I feel that I'm warmed up, I like to put the metronome at like 190, 200. Kind of uh, almost acting as if I knew how to play that, that tempo. So I'm kind of trying to move my hands as if I knew how to play that perfectly clean. So I'm trying to kind of uh, understand wh what, what, <laughs> what I need to think about when playing at that tempo, what it feels like to play at that tempo. So I feel it's like really useful to kind of pushing to higher tempos and maybe not staying there too long so you don't get like really sloppy. Yeah, for sure bump up the metronome a little bit when you're warmed up. Uh, it's gonna be fun to kind of get the metronome back to like 140, 160, 180 after that because you kind of uh, went a little bit overboard. Thanks for checking out this quick tip video and let me know how you liked it. Uh, leave a comment or if you liked it, leave a like. Uh, that's obviously a huge motivation for me. <laughs> if I, I can see that people actually like to watch these things. Most likely people seem to be interested at least in the idea of me making these kind of vloggy <laughs> update videos and tips, uh, tip videos. So let me know if you want to see more of this and thanks for checking out and see you in the next one.